Micheline Chola, bonjour. And bonjour, Tina can you Salama. Can Alors, you quel rôle ou poste occupez-vous en ce moment à Radio Capi Merci. Euh, S'il faut me présenter, je dois partir du, du début. Mm -hmm. J'étais recrutée comme journaliste et reporter. Je faisais aussi la présentation des journaux en langue nationale, les Kikongo et les Lingala. Mm -hmm. Et maintenant, euh, je coordonne de quatre langues nationales. C'est-à-dire je suis secrétaire de rédaction. Alors, est-ce que vous pourriez nous donner un rapide aperçu de la MONUC Oui, comme tu le dis, rapide, vraiment. La MONUC a été créée le 30 novembre 1999 par la résolution 1291 du Conseil de sécurité suite aux accords de l'Ousaka. Je vais expliquer un peu, tout simplement. Un peu. Je vais un peu de ce que nous There were agreements that uh, brought together the Congolese people. There was war in the country. They were fighting. And we needed to find out how we could, how the country could be led and put together. It was in South Africa that an agreement was reached. And that eventually worked. Now, Manuk is the biggest uh, UN PKO. The Manuk. Uh, mandate is within Chapter 7 of the Charter, and they're authorized to use all means at their disposal uh, within their deployments in order to ensure the protection of civilians under imminent threat of physical violence. And the, act, the radio plays what role in, in Manuk? Well, our radio broadcast uh, is, uh, plays an important role in transmitting information. In Congo, Radio Capi has nine different transmitting stations, and it is the most widely listened to in the country. It pr provides information from Monuk, but it also is a general radio that provides information uh, of a general nature and music as well. So Radio Capi is in French and uh, other four other national languages, Kikongo, Lingela, Ilchinda, Iswali. So you've been broadcasting then in these other four languages for how long? And what was the reason for those broadcasts? Well, that was the Central question. Since the beginning of Radio Capi in 2002, we've been broadcasting in these four national languages. At the beginning, the idea was just to uh, broadcast news. But eventually, uh, we added other broadcasts. During the electoral period, for example, and even, and even after the, the post-electoral period, we added other broadcasts in the national languages, uh, languages for, uh, for discussions in different languages. The objective was to allow for every citizen to Uh, understand in their own language the t matters of, of that moment. Radio Capi had 50,000, has 50,000 auditors, listeners. Uh, how did they break down by language? Yes, in February 2002, we saw that there were no competitors for Radio Capi. It, it was the only radio broadcasting information in national languages, plus in French as well. And it was throughout country. Now, currently we go beyond national borders because it is followed in uh, bordering countries, Congo, Brazzaville, Angola, Central African Republic, Burundi, Rwanda also, a lot of other countries in fact, since there was war along, uh, that, uh, along, along the uh, equator in the north and south Kivu and as well in a part of Kitikanga, there was a big uh, audience of listeners as well. There, many have uh, remained Uh, faithful to us because there's a great deal of professionalism of our journalists at Radio Capi. So in the context of Congo, I can s ensure that, yes, with our four lang uh, national languages, uh, it's, uh, it has become essential. There are other languages as well. Uh, without those four national languages, we, things wouldn't work because these are the national languages of our country and people find themselves uh, identified throughout the language, through their languages. So do you You have the same program in, in each language, or do you have to broadcast different broadcasts in different languages? All, all programs are in each uh, national language. We have a dialogue between uh, Congolese in these uh, broadcasts. During the electoral and post-electoral period, we had different political debates or discussions, and they were in all four languages, national languages. This was a political debate on uh, specific items, and that was in the national languages. Now, Radio... Capi also uh, uh, has uh, information uh, f from the uh, law lawmaking bodies, the independent electoral uh, body as well, the, the courts and other, th other bodies as well. All of these broadcasts were incredibly successful. A lot of uh, politicians were able to reach their grassroots by way 
of these broadcasts when the, the listeners could listen in, in their native languages, in their national languages. So the, can't, there's a people divided by a conflict. How does that affect things? Well, the respect for linguistic diversity in Radio Kapi allows for the Congolese to feel valued, highly valued, and the con people of Congo recognize themselves through their own national languages, which uh, is, and more people understand these languages than French. If you're a, a farmer in, in, and under a tree or on a canoe, a dugout canoe, if you can listen to the news in your own language, uh, mentioning your village, your area in Radio Kapi, that ha brings a, a great deal of pleasure to the listener. And they do want to hear of their area, of their town or village. Radio Kapi then uh, works with uh, Monuk then, the PKOs, Radio Mira in Sudan, for example, is linked in. There's UN Radio in Sierra Leone, on Mill Radio in Liberia. Contact with them, perhaps? Yes, sometimes. So what is the distribution of the national languages and what is the amount of listeners for each language? Languages? Well, the five, four national languages cover uh, a, a, a quite, a, quite a swath of land to the east and the south east is basically where we have Swahili, five provinces, Katanga in the north, and so South Kivu and Mariama in the east. Lingala is spoken throughout most of the country, and uh, this particularly with the influence of the, uh, of the previous uh, president, all the soldiers had to speak Lingala, and so it was spoken throughout the provinces, and a lot of people listen to those broadcasts. Lingala is spoken in the Ecuadorian province, and also in the uh, in Kinshasa as well. Now, other languages are in the in eastern and western Kasai, and in in the lower Congo and Bandandu as well. I could say that Lingala, Kikongo, and Swahili go beyond our borders. They're not followed uh, only in uh, the DRC, but also in Brazzaville and Angola, where we have some uh, of our national languages spoken, and other countries as well. This allows people to f follow this news uh, in their national languages. Swahili, uh, we have about 40% of our listeners, and the rest distributed, uh, broken down with the other three languages. The Radio Kapi people have been affected sometimes by the conflict. What has been the uh, impact of this? Well, there have been two murders of our journalists in Bukavu. And this was in a period of less than two years, and that was quite shocking for us. But that did not undermine the, the bravery of our other colleagues. The idea is to not allow the, uh, those who don't want the country to change to have their way. So we continue to work, continue to speak out, and uh, even uh, to do so and to work harder in the name of our fallen colleagues. This is uh, so that things change not just in our country but throughout the world. So thank you very much. Uh, uh, thank you for being with us as the uh, editor-in-chief and also a journalist for Radio Copy. Thank you. Thank you. That was a quick view of uh, the role that language can play in PKOs. Multilingualism is certainly very topical. It's in the agenda of the UNGA and the Secretary General every two years puts forth a report on multilingual activities. Evermore, multilingualism is uh, an important aspect in the PKOs. And this is very much borne in mind by the member states. We have seen progress. We have seen increased interest given to this dimension of language as a factor of peace. I thank you.